The diamictites and sandstones are so different that the two rock types are easily distinguished. Even away from the shoreline, where plentiful inland exposures are lichen-covered, it is easy to tell them apart by their distinctive textures. The Garvelichs, like most of the Western Isles, are not difficult to map in great detail. Diamictite units, forming around two-thirds of the outcrops, are shown in green, and the sandstones are mapped as orange. Exposures on the southwest shore of the island are not the only ones to reveal an alternation between possibly glaciogenic and ice-free tidal conditions. Most of the Garvelichs are made up of diamictite sandstone repetitions. The stratigraphic log, starting at the top of the local succession, shows average grain size increasing to the right. There are many more than just two repetitions and thicknesses of the units are variable. Each of the two distinct units contains a variety of sedimentary structures. Deducing their environmental significance is not simple and depends on detailed analysis of these structures and the shoreline offers the best chance of finding them. Following the shoreline northeastwards, successively older cycles of diamictite sandstone repetitions are exposed. The youngest diamictites contain clasts of many different kinds, mainly much older metamorphic rocks and granites. They may have been derived from exposures of basement and transported from far off. The clast composition changes in successively older diamictites. There is an increasing proportion of sedimentary rocks. These fawn clasts are likely metamorphosed carbonate sediments. Strata very like them are common, lower in the Dalradian. There is also an unusual rock type associated with the diamictites. Instead of being a jumbled mass, this unit is finely laminated. Small-scale recent erosion has created a complex micro-landscape picked out by different colour bands. In cross-section, the laminae are perfectly parallel alternations of fine and slightly coarser silts. They suggest low energy conditions, and the innumerable repetitions perhaps signify a seasonal control on sediment supply, greater melting of floating ice in summer than in winter. But these beds are controversial and might have formed from turbidity flows. The sandstones frequently show contortions, but since they occur only in a single stratum, they are not tectonic folds. They could be the result of slumping of unconsolidated sands, triggered to move down a gentle slope by earthquakes. Structures nearby, however, suggest dewatering of saturated sediments. Loading of sands with different porosities, and therefore different densities, encourages the more porous layers to rise under gravity. This results in bulges. Upward escape of water during loading is an alternative means of producing the fold-like structures. The diamictite sandstone repetitions contain many ambiguities. Deposition of diamictites and sandstones built up about 900 metres of sediment on the Garvelichs. The 38 repetitions must have spanned between hundreds of thousands and a few million years. However, there is an abrupt change in the oldest part of the Garvelich section through the Dalradian. The diamictites are underlain by completely different sediments mapped out in mauve. This is a very fine-grained rock. It's soft and well-bedded. And it fizzes with acid, so it's calcium carbonate, a limestone. A limestone. It's a low energy environment. Uh, there's no sign of any, any quartz in that. And look at these, just here in the bedding. There's some land shapes in cross section. And they, uh, they, could, be, they could be discs. Those look very like uh, the, one of the stromatolites, uh, which are formed from uh, uh, carbonate secretions by blue-green bacteria. That tells us something else. Blue-green bacteria need light to photo photosynthesize. So uh, 
it's low energy and probably very shallow water. Distant from land, though, there's no quartz in it. 